Hello, and welcome to Video Tarot live stream hosted by Encore Entrepreneurs Toby Yunus and Shelly Carney. We inspire excitement for small set photography tools, techniques, methods and workflow while answering all your questions about digital photography, cameras, lenses, studio lighting, and sets. Join us every Thursday at 1 p.m. Mountain Time so we can share our knowledge and experience to provide actionable tips to improve your digital photography skills. Hello and welcome to Video Carol Live. I'm Shelley Carney. And I'm Toby Yunus, and we may have to start this broadcast all over again. My goodness. So uh, I'm going to apologize for this. We'll, we'll take these videos down eventually. But uh, I decided to start streaming back to our Amazon Live page. And I have made two mistakes in start uh, so far. So I have to restart. No, this. you don't have to restart. Yeah, We're not going to restart. It worked fine for YouTube, which is where it's on the world. And this one is going to start in just a moment. And we're going to carry on. We're going to move forward. And... <laughs> so, what are we talking about today, Toby? We're talking about what we always talk about, and that is small set photography, along with tools, techniques, methods, and workflow. And it's one of my favorite things to talk about. Uh, I really enjoy uh, what I do. I'm very familiar with the technology. Um, I really like using the technology because it is digital photography. And I've been doing it since, well, I've been a photographer since the 70s. Uh, I've trained and I operated, I worked as my career was uh, based in photography. Yes, go on. Okay, I'll go. Uh, for over 50 years. Uh, and then I made the switch to digital photography in the late 90s uh, from analog, from film photography to digital photography and videography. And so uh, I've I've always played with it, but now I'm getting more serious about documenting what I'm doing. And I think uh, being on Amazon Live enables us to uh, do that. So you're, we're glad that you're here to join us. I'm glad Shelly's here to help me get through the show uh, because, dang, guys, it's been one of those days. So, all right, let's start out. And I'm going to play a short video right now and do kind of a walkthrough of uh, the setup that I had for this for the particular shop that I'm going to show you in just a minute. And you should have seen one on the thumbnail, uh, but I did some other stuff with it because of what I had the opportunity to do. But let's watch the video. It's only three minutes long. This is kind of my, you know, walkthrough of the set. Hey, everybody. This is Toby Yunus with Video Tarot Live. Uh, this is the setup that you're going to see on our next show. You can find us on YouTube at Video Tarot Live, Facebook on Video Tarot Live, or you can follow us on our Amazon channel. Uh, and you can find that by going to follow.videotarot.com. That's follow.videotarot.com. Again, that's Thursday, 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, March 10th. So uh, you'll see my standard rig here, the uh, Manfrotto tripod topped by the Benro three-way head. It's a micrometer movement head topped by the Lumix G9. 20 megapixel uh, mirrorless camera. It's a 2x crop factor. This has now become my t favorite lens. I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, the good news, it's sharp as a tack. The bad news, it's a manual lens, so you have to do it all manually. It's the TT Artisan 40 millimeter f2.8, but because the Lumix is a 2x crop factor, it shoots as an 80 millimeter lens, and it is a macro. So on top of that, of course, is the uh, Go Godox X Pro wireless flash transmitter that can control not only the one flash that I have here, but up to uh, 64 different flashes. I'm using my iPad uh, to tether the camera to, and uh, that's because Panasonic very nicely has put an app uh, in the app store that gives you wireless tethering to any smart device. Now, the photo that you've so the thumbnail is different uh, than the one that I, you're seeing now. And that's because I, I set up a second shot to celebrate International Women's Day. That's the, you may have seen that shot on my Instagram account. Um, I'm using a whole bunch of replica surfaces. I'm using the replica surfaces studio. I'm using their two of their surfaces. This one is called Butcher's Block, and that one is it's a new one called um, Lush View. And I just love it. I'll be using more of it. Uh, because it's just uh, too easy 
not to use. Uh, and they have a special announcement that they're going to be making on Friday, and I'll share that with you on Thursday. Uh, did I say sell in this 5-in-1 reflector, the newer stainless steel light stand? And it's not newer as in brand new, it's newer as in the company. Newer is what it looks like, but they, they say newer. On top is the uh, reflector clip that I recommend everybody getting. Today we shot with the Godox 60 millimeter by 90 millimeter softbox, and behind that was the Godox MS300 Studio Flash with a um, modeling light on it. That's why you can see the light on the studio. So we'll look forward to seeing you Thursday, 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on YouTube at Video Tarot or, or on our Amazon channel at follow.videotarot.com. Thanks. Okay. So the reason so we had to tell everybody what time and what place was because he was putting that out on Instagram and TikTok so mm -hmm. that uh, people would show up. And we yeah. do have an audience. So if you are here live with us, please feel free to ask questions about any of the products. Or if you have any specific questions about photography, uh, settings on the camera, what type of lights to use, anything like that, please put them in the chat and Toby will answer those for you. And if you're not at Amazon Live with us at follow.videotero.com, we also can see the chats from uh, YouTube and Facebook. I'm, I'm sorry, the comments from YouTube and Facebook, and we'll address those as okay. well. And Twitter, that's right. Let me put up our banner here so you can get all the information. This is important uh, because this has, um, oops, that's wrong podcast. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been difficult. Let's see. Yeah, we do a lot of shows. Um, there we go. There's the right one. There we go. Tell about the color. So this has all our contact information on it. So if there's a point at which you, you feel like you need to contact us, uh, just look uh, there. But the two important ones are Amazon Store at store.videoterror.com and our Amazon Live page at follow.videoterror.com. I do. Uh, I would like you to take it up if you get the opportunity during the show to like our video on those channels on which you can like it, share it with your family, your friends, your neighbors, your business associates, the entirety of your social network, so that we can grow each of these channels. And finally, if you hit that follow button, if you are not oh the follow button on that, Amazon, oh, right? one, yeah. uh, and if you are not already a subscriber, you do so by clicking the subscribe button on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and clicking the follow button on Amazon uh, Live. So make sure you take advantage of that. In addition to that, uh, on our YouTube channel, your Super Chat light is lit. So if you go down to the bottom of the chat window, you'll see the stylized but grayed out dollar sign. Charlie tells me there may be a dollar bill emoji there as well. Click on it, and the fine folks at YouTube will help you walk through the process of making a contribution to our little project here. Okay? And feel free to ask any questions you may have in the chat. So yeah. we'll see them. Thank you. So I'm going to go over to uh, comments on this side. Uh, let's go over to uh, take a look at the photos now. What's going to pop up is our, our, I also have a new camera set up so that you can see uh, what I'm talking about in some of these pieces. This was the shot that I originally submitted in uh, on the thumbnail. That's this one here. And let me open up so you can see it. Um, and that was the shot that I made with that same setup that you just saw, saw in the video. And those are the uh, tools that we're going to be talking about. So uh, what's interesting about this shot is that background is called Lush View. It's one of Replica Surfaces. And I want to tell you more about what Replica Surfaces and Amazon are doing together uh, near the end of the show. So stick me, with me with that, for, with me for that, with us for that. Uh, I also used in this shot the glossy white. Uh, I call these walls and floors, right? They're, they must, they may have names for them in the set, but the wall is lush view and the floor is glossy white. Now, I also took a shot with the glossy black and kind of brought it down. For, it's not quite a low key, but I brought down uh, the uh, brightness just a little bit. And that was a shot that I got. Now, I discovered in the process, not having made this comparison before, that the reflectivity of the white is significantly different from the reflectivity of the black. Same lighting, everything the same, brought it down just a little bit, but the reflectivity on the gloss black is, as you can see, just a little bit nicer. But again, you have to have the shot for it. This, this shot probably isn't appropriate for a low-key shot. 
So this is the shot that I ended up, I used exactly the same setup. The only thing I changed out, I think I, yeah, I changed out the floor to butcher block because Shelly suggested that I should probably make a post an Instagram or Facebook post for uh, International Women's Day. So I just changed the floor and uh, didn't change anything else um, and made this shot uh, as well. So that's what I ended up putting on Instagram and uh, Facebook. So I think what we can do now is we can start going through our, and you can help the folks go through each other. Let's start with this is, uh, as you saw in the video, all I'm going to do here is go through uh, each of the products that you saw in that video and tell you what I like and don't like about them. Actually, if I use it, I do like it. There's nothing that I use that I don't like, because if I don't like it, I stop using it, put it on eBay. So you know what, uh, Amazon, if you're listening, one of the things that you could do is give us the option of selling out the equipment that we buy from Amazon back to the folks on our channel. So, I don't know. I don't know if there's that thing for that. So this is the Manfrotto, Manfrotto MT-190X Pro. I have the MT-190 Pro B, uh, which is an older model. I've had it now for about 12 years. It's very durable. A couple of things they don't show you in this particular layout uh, is that this, uh, as you can see, this lengthening piece will come out, but it also turns over at a 90 degree angle. So you can pull it up and then bend it over not bend it, but snap it over into a 90 degree angle. So now your camera is facing downward if you want to make a shot uh, towards the ground or if you want to use it for a flat lay, which a lot of you small set folks will be doing, especially if you use replica surfaces because they have literally a dozen videos on just doing flat lays alone. In addition to that, uh, you can extend these legs up uh, to three stands and at three, three lengths. And they will also spread out so they're almost flat. That means you could get between uh, spreading the legs out and the fact that you can flip your camera over at a 90 degree angle, um, you can. What was that? I would be using the mouse again if I had. It, uh, okay, yeah. <clears throat> you know what? <laughs> Let's do that right now. So you're going to be in charge of mass moving and selecting scenes, all right? Uh, so, uh, so not only can you flip your uh, camera, the head over at a 90 degree angle, it doesn't show it in these pictures, um, which surprised me because that's one of the cool features about this, uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, tripod. Uh, but in addition to that, you can spread the legs out. So between spreading the legs out almost flat and flipping your camera over the 90 degree angle, you can get a, sh a shot and I have gotten shots that are basically the lens is six inches above the ground uh, between the two of them. So um, uh, it's a great tripod. It's a very durable tripod. Uh, and I probably should upgrade to the new one. And I, I will after the show because I promised myself. Let's go back one. Let's go on to the head. I think it's better if you open them in a new window because you don't have to go back. So this is the head that I rely on not only for macro photography, but for the small set photography. And the benefits to it is that you can set it up so that you can make either gross or macro level movements. And that's really important when you're doing a setup like this because you don't want to make big loosen the ball head, move the ball head around, tighten the ball head movements. And if I'm out doing a landscape, it's a lot easier to handle that kind of motion. This one enables you to make little tiny changes to either uh, roll, pitch, or yaw, and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, making a big gross movement. What's your book? I didn't because it's still attached to the tripod. Oh, okay. So uh, maybe I'll bring it next time. But you did see it, and again, once you start doing either the small set photography or macro photography, I'm going to strongly recommend. I noticed that it, right now it's 15% off for uh, Prime users. So um, uh, that would be a good deal. It would be a good deal at normal price, uh, but it's a great deal at Prime. Uh, it is well constructed. It is one of those pieces that you will own for a lifetime. And you'll see those star rings on there on each of the handles. So the big, the big round handles, I don't know how else to describe them, are what you use to make the micrometer level movements. The star rings you pull and twist, and it enables you to make quick, big changes. 
so that you can move, you know, 90 degrees or whatever you need in any position, make the bug, uh, big move, and then um, and then refine it with the uh, knobs. So it once you use it, it is hard to stop using it. You you find out that it, it's so easy to make adjustments uh, that you start using it for all your photography. I use I do use it when I go out on landscape. I haven't. There's one tripod that I have that. Uh, that has a ball head on it, and I keep that tripod because it's carbon fiber ball head, and it packs down to a bag that size, so it's a great travel tripod. This combination is not a travel tripod unless you're putting it in the back of your SUV or truck, because it's big and heavy and not the kind of thing you're going to go back back and forth. But it's very stable and very easy to use and very easy to make those micrometer level movements. All right, let's go on to the next one. So this is the camera that I rely upon. It is the Lumix G9, and I do have it with me. So Shelly can add that window in. And the Lumix G9 looks like that. It is a uh, Panasonic camera. That way. Panasonic camera. It is an upgrade. This is the Lumix G7 that I owned before. And I have owned Panasonic, Panasonic cameras uh, uh, since around 2010, uh, when uh, for years, 50 years before that, I owned Nikon cameras. And uh, then Nikon at the time was not keeping up with the digital video component of their technology. And I had to look to someone else. The choices at that time were Sony, Canon, and Panasonic and Panasonic, Panasonic met my needs at a lower price, both for bodies and lenses, and that's why I went with it. Uh, so at that time, I purchased two of the G7s, which I still have. I need to put the money because they're kind of gathering dust at this point. Very good camera, very durable, uh, waterproof and dustproof, not water resistant and dust resistant, um, and what I call a prosumer camera. Uh, it's a good start. You can find them on eBay now for around. Uh, 250 bucks, and it would still be a good camera if you're not trying to make a living at photography. When they went to the G9, which was around 2018, they added some nice features to it. You can see some of the ones on top. The biggest is they went from a 16 megapixel sensor to a 20 megapixel sensor. It is a micro four thirds camera, but the G9 has some really, really cool features on it. And those features uh, include the uh, top LED screen for information. A lot of the other features are there, but it has a, a nicer uh, control ring and it has some uh, firmware uh, additions that enable you to do things like uh, you can actually do a stacked macro shot inside the camera. So you don't have to take your 50 pictures and put it, bring them into a stacking software. The camera actually does that for you. And again, if you're a macro photographer, that's a real time saver. It's an amazing time saver, a time saver, and it does it much better than uh, you can do when you're stacking. Now, I suppose if you have a professional working for you, you're, you know, an editor, a photo editor that stacks uh, and then brings it into Photoshop and, you know, does all the work for you, then you'll stick with that uh, software stacking but you can do it inside the camera. So it, they are both micro four thirds camera. Uh, that is, they have the micro four thirds or the APS-C sensor rather than a full frame sensor. So that means they have a crop factor. The crop factor hasn't changed between the two. It's still uh, 2.0, uh, but they increase the size, the uh, resolution of the sensor from 16 megapixels to 20 megapixels. So it's a great camera. You can get them on Amazon for how much now? 1097 Yeah, so 1100 bucks, which is a good price. They do go on sale. Panasonic does put them on sale occasionally. and uh, But they are great cameras. And the advantage is if you're moving from uh, the G series, the G7 to the G9, all the lenses, all the accessories fit. So I was very happy with that because I do have uh, a bunch of Lumix, uh, Panasonic Lumix G lenses. I was very uh, happy uh, that they made that change. Larger in the back, you'll see a larger LED panel. Right, 
so uh, a lot of the features are nicer, smoother, cleaner, and a lot easier to use. One of the things that I do like about that, about this, is that the G9 comes with the capability uh, to put two SD cards in, full-size SD cards uh, at once. So uh, you always have that extra room when you're outside shooting. And because the images are going to be a lot large, uh, not a lot, but uh, larger than the images that are produced on the G7, those SD cards will uh, come in handy. So I keep two 64 megabyte or gigabyte SD cards in. In addition to that, although the G7 did have an audio input right here, you can see the microphone uh, input there. The G9 has an audio input and an audio output. So you can use your wireless receiver plugged into the microphone, and then you can plug your headset in uh, to the uh, output for the headphones. That's right here. You probably can't see the line. So that's right there, headphones and microphone, um, which is very, very nice because that means you don't have to add stuff to your camera in order to uh, make a movie with it. It's just uh, very cool. So I love this new camera. It has a couple of great features that have made my life easier. It has one feature that if you set it to 80 megapixels and it's a, by turning a knob, but this knob right here, you can actually set it to 80 megapixels. And what the camera does when you, when you set it to that is it takes six images, not quite simultaneously. You should be on a tripod when you do this. And then inside the camera, it merges those images dynamically with firmware so that, uh, so that uh, you end up with an 80 megapixel raw image, which is just amazing. Um, it uses up a lot of space, but it's worth it because if you're making photographs for, um, uh, for galleries and, and sale, and you want them to be big enough so that it's not going to show any pixels when they're blown up to four feet or six feet by six feet, um, this camera will produce an image that enables you to do that kind of enlargement. So I was really, really impressed with that. Lumix, Panasonic, Lumix G9. Um, and I want to point out now while we're while I'm thinking about it, any of the accessories that I'm going to recommend as a result are designed specifically for the MF Micro Four Thirds lens mount and the uh, Lumix uh, hot shoe. But you can buy all the accessories that I'm recommending with other cameras as well. So they all have the same uh, same kind of stuff. So it comes with one battery and one charger which is never enough, as you guys know. So let's go to the next one, Shell. I think it's the batteries. Yeah. So one of the things that I get whenever I order a camera is additional batteries. And this is one of the package of batteries that uh, BM produces. Uh, and again, if you go to any of the, just look at batteries for your camera, order the batteries and order an additional charge for them. That's the size you can see right, that they're put the full lens, so you can have a comparison. Um, so this is, this charges uh, two batteries. I, I want to say they're on the charger simultaneously, but they basically basically do a serial charge. Uh, they charge, all these chargers charge one, and then the other, normally, this particular charger charges two batteries simultaneously. So uh, that's the BM product. I don't know if others do, but you can check. And one of the ways I've noticed you can tell is if there's these two lights that you see up there at the top, um, if the two, if they have two lights on there, I know this sounds kind of crazy, it's an indication that they're charging the batteries simultaneously. That's why they put the lights on there to let you know they're charging simultaneously. So I don't know if it actually takes longer to charge them. I just know they charge simultaneously, and that's very helpful for the kind of work that I do. So I always have fresh batteries. Okay. So, um, and I've used them now uh, since I bought the camera, which has been about a month, month and a half. I should tell you what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was very pleased with that. Next on the list is this base right here. And, oh, did we go to lens first? Mm -hmm. you want, what do you want? The lens? Uh, let's go to the one just to the right of the filter. That's the battery, battery pack. Yeah. yeah. 
So this is what Linux calls the Pro Battery Pack. Um, and it has a couple of advantages when you have the camera, it screws right onto the camera itself. I'm gonna bring it over here so I can screw it on, you can see. And I'll make a comparison for you. So it screws right onto the camera like that. And you can see how much bigger it is, you know, it adds to it. So this comes along with two benefits. Um, benefit number one is it adds a second battery uh, to, your, to your camera. So it goes from using the internal battery, the one that's inside the camera, um, to the external battery. So it gives you twice the length of shooting time at its gift when you're doing uh, still or moving images. In addition to that, it has controls right here. So when you go from a horizontal shot to a vertical shot, you have all these controls here, shutter, uh, a shutter release, uh, uh, changes for white balance ISO and um, exposure. Uh, it has an on off button, right? Uh, and it has the this ring uh, button that enables you to move whatever you're selecting, white balance ISO or uh, f-stop. Um, and you can change it right here. Uh, the other thing that they've added uh, to this particular camera right here is a joystick. So you can move around the LED screen using the joystick on either the camera or this when you're in vertical mode. And you don't have to do that crazy like twist your hand uh, to make the vertical shot. This has that ability built into it. So it's very cool. Uh, and you get the benefit of that extra battery. So I don't do a lot of vertical work. I just need the extra battery. Um, I will tell you, and um, I hope Am uh, not uh, Amazon, but I hope Panasonic isn't uh, isn't listening. If you so, things like this are manufactured in either Japan or China. They're manufactured by one company, and then they're rebranded. If you buy the Panasonic version of this battery pack, uh, this additive battery edition, what they call it, replacement for Pro Wireless Remote Control, et cetera, et cetera, it's three hundred and twenty-four bucks. Or you can go find this one made by DSTE, probably exactly the same thing, works in exactly the same way, and it's uh, one fifth the price at $62.99. So Panasonic, don't get mad. We all have to be practical when we, uh, when we do these things. All right. All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, let's go back to the lens. Yeah. So this has become uh, my favorite lens. And uh, it's my favorite because it's one of, one of if not on Panasonic, Panasonic line, it's Micro Four Thirds. They do make them for uh, Sony, Nikon, Canon, and Fuji mounts as well. Uh, and it's the uh, TT Artisan 40 millimeter F2.8 macro lens. And I wish I had a scale under the camera just to show you. Oops. So we can put you in. No, I want you to show your thing. All right. Unless you want to put it on the other camera. Well, let me let me let me put it on the other camera so that we get so folks can see what we're doing. All right. So this is the TT Artisan 40 millimeter macro lens. I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is it's sharp as a tack, and it focuses because it's macro one to one ratio. So that means uh, you can get a picture of a, of a, I don't know, ant that's going to be one to one in the frame. All right. That's how close you can get with it. Um, but it is a manual lens. You have to, the f-stop, it doesn't connect to your camera automatically. If you're looking, most lenses will have those little, uh, do I have another little Panasonic lens? Right around here, you'll see the little gold connectors. That's true for Panasonic. I know they're on Sony. I know they're on Nikon. Uh, I'm sure they're on all the modern uh, cameras that use uh, uh, a variety of lenses that you know have adaptable lenses to them. Uh, this one doesn't. It's all manual, which means you have to calculate. You have to figure out the f-stop manually, especially if you're using flash. Um, but I know how to do that because I had uh, lenses like this before I had lenses that were automatic. I had to do it anyway. But it's so sharp uh, after you when you take the shot 
that it's worth the effort. And I was gonna, I was gonna make a comparison for you. I, like I said, I want to bring a scale in one of these days because this lens is three times heavier than any of my Panasonic lenses. And for those of you that are familiar with lenses, you know they're heavier because they have more glass in them. And the more glass, the better. The, uh, the uh, focusing ring is very smooth. And you'll see when I extend the focusing ring, it pops out so that you get that macro effect. Uh, that's pretty long and it gives you the ratios for each. Now you gotta remember that since the uh, Lumix is a 2X crop factor, uh, it sensors the 2X crop factor. This lens, the 40 millimeter lens actually shoots at 80 millimeter. So it shoots as a moderate telephoto. So the other thing it does, so it does the small set stuff. It does macro stuff, but honestly, it is a beautiful portrait lens. That 80 millimeter is not quite what the eye sees. The eye sees at about 105 millimeters. So most photographers go in that 105 millimeter range so that they can get the shot that looks natural to most people when they see the photograph. This one's at 80, which is close enough, but it's so darn sharp. You just get to, uh, you just get to love it. I mean, I'm in love with it. If anybody, if you can love a lens, I'm in love with it. Uh, very smooth. You can make a choice whether the F stops are click stops or not. Um, and you can see, let's see, can you see it opening? I don't think I have the light that, that lets me show you that. Um, let's see. Can you see it? Opening up, that's uh, F16 and that's F2.8. It has a 52 millimeter filter size on it. And I'm gonna explain why that's important in just a second. So I recently went to a larger softbox. So we can, we can put this away, let's go back to. So that's the uh, TT Artisan 40 millimeter F2.8 macro lens. TT Artisan has a number of sizes, f-stops lens in various uh, f-stops and focal lengths and for various cameras. Just make sure this one is designed for the micro four thirds mount. Make sure you, if you decide to buy one, you get it for it. Yeah, you know, whatever mount your uh, camera is for the Canon, Micron, or, uh, or Sony. I think one of these days they all do the same thing, but of course that's impossible. So let's go back just a little bit and uh, let's talk about softbox and then light, and I'll explain what I had to do. So I recently, uh, no, let's, we'll go, we'll come back to that, but let's, I want to explain, yeah, what we did with softbox. So the first thing that I did is uh, I went from the Godox um, 30 by 90 millimeter softbox, which is a kind of narrow softbox. And I felt like it, it, it was very good in certain situations in which the set included reflectivity, meaning like I had a, uh, um, you know, a pitcher, a glass pitcher, and it included re reflectivity because it created a beautiful long top to bottom highlight in the glass. Uh, but I noticed that I was missing out on some other areas. Uh, it really wasn't soft enough. It was a little bit harder than I wanted. Uh, and so I went from that 30 by 90 to 60 by 90. So, you know, in, in that's metric in, in the English uh, measurement system, it would be the difference between one foot by, by three feet to two feet by three feet. That's what the new one is like. So it gives you much broader, it literally covers the space. And then, so I got that uh, and I was using my uh, Godox uh, V860 flashes uh, in them using the, the Godox mount for uh, speed lights. But I decided it was time to step up to a studio flash unit um, because I didn't have a studio flash unit. I had the speed lights, which are effectively field lights, you know, uh, but you can use them in a studio. So I really wanted a light that was a studio light. Let's go to the light showing so we can show the folks that. And so I looked around and as usual, usual Godox came to 
uh, my, yeah. So this is the uh, Godox MS300, Studio Flash with modeling light. And I was amazed and surprised at the price, $109. And it comes with a Bowen mount, which fits right into that softbox that we just looked at which has the Bowen interface. So um, if I remember correctly, I'll have to look it up. I think it's a 400, let's see. It doesn't say exactly what watt second it is. It's an amazingly powerful light for the kind of work that I'm doing. It's designed for a studio and it's designed where the lights uh, for example, in a portrait situation, especially if you're doing a standing portrait situation with the kind of softbox that I have on it, would be further away. It would be 10 feet from the subject. Well, you've seen in our setups that these lights are not 10 feet from the subject. They're a few feet at most from the subject. So first of all, I was producing a lot more light. Now, I can bring this light down to 1 128, 1 128 of its real value in order to kind of uh, muzzle it. I don't know what else, what would you call it? Dim, oh, good one. In order to dim the light enough so that I could use this F2.8 lens. Now, uh, so we have to talk about depth of field. We all know that simple algorithm about depth of field, the larger the F2.8, F the shallower, the narrower the depth of field. And in a lot of the shots that I want, that I, that I make on a set, I want a narrower depth of field, but in order to get the benefit of this, of the light, I'd have to dim it to 1 128th uh, of, uh, of its capacity. And I would have to shut the lens down to F16, just so that I didn't blow out the shot. Now at F16, you don't even have to worry about focusing at that point because uh, you're at effectively you know, infinite depth of field, right? So, but there are times where I don't want infinite depth of field. I want a narrow depth of field. I'd like to shoot it at F2.8, but this thing produces too much light. So I happen to have in my kit this, and this is, we can go back one. We're looking at the neutral density filter right there. Yeah, yeah. All right. So this is the K and F variable neutral density filter. Now, you guys probably don't remember the olden days like I do. Well, maybe you do. But back in the olden days, you had to get neutral density filters in fixed dimensions. So there was a neutral density filter 2, 4, 8, 16, and I saw them as high as 32. And what that meant is you had the benefit of a filter that got you, uh, that bought you uh, another stop in the case of two. In four, it was two stops. In eight, it was three, uh, three stops, yeah. So, but you had to have separate filters for each one, so you were constantly changing those neutral density filters. And I remember doing a shoot with Shelly one time uh, that she had agreed, or maybe I had agreed to do with it, but you were starring in it. That, uh, the one that we did out there, was it at Golandrinus? Mm. Uh, where you ended up tackling the bad guy? Mm -hmm. Remember, what was the name of that? We were, we, were, we were doing it as a favor it's to us. Yeah, on YouTube. <laughs> if you're watching um, we, uh, we were doing it as a favor to a film student, and she needed help with the cinematography, uh, cinematography side, and she needed help with the uh, acting. So Shelly was acting it, and I was doing the uh, 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 shooting, and we had a great time, but it was in broad daylight, and I was trying to get the effect. And so I had neutral density filters, but I was going from from sun to shade to semi-shade to dark rooms. And I was having to change the neutral density filters each time because at that time there was no such thing as a uh, variable neutral density filter. And if you did want to, want to get one, even when they did come out, they were 80, 90 bucks. Well, variable neutral density filter with good glass in it made by a well-known manufacturer, k &F, for 30 bucks. Now, with this, and it fits for this particular one, this is the 52 millimeters, you can see, which is one I bought. It fits on the front of that TT Artisan lens. And I have the ability to go from two to 64 stops worth of, it's the equivalent of having two, eight, 
1632, 1632 and 64 uh, neutral density filters, all in one. And it just, it's like a circular polarizer, you twist it right here. Now I can basically shut down the light from my lens, and I'm, I mean from my uh, studio flash, set it at f128, set my lens at f2.8, and then get the light right using this neutral density filter. So if you decide to kind of go with this kit, one of the things that you're going to, if you, you consider using any of these tools, uh, and you're going to be producing as much light. Now, if you're shooting in a studio with lots of room, and you're shooting full-length portraits or models, things like that, and you're going to move that MS300 backwards with a softbox, you won't have to worry about it. But when you're shooting these small sets or macro photography, you're going to need that variable neutral density filter, okay? So you cut out some of the light because you can't shut down, you can't dim that MS300 enough to use uh, F2.8. I mean, the other thing, of course, is I'm trying to get the highest resolution. So my ISO is set at 200. Um, and that's pretty low. I mean, you'd think with that, uh, I would need to uh, add some light, you know, but it doesn't, not with that MS300. So I, I love the MS300 and at its price, 109 bucks for a studio flash with a modeling light. So the question is, why is it only 109 bucks? The answer is even through, even though you're using the wireless transmitter to control it, it's missing the through the lens part of flash. So you have probably become comfortable with the idea that you either use your camera's flash on board flash for your system. No, I was just wondering what we were talking about. Right oh, uh, go, well, go back to full screen for just a moment because we're going to go back to, uh, you can, well, let's leave it here for right now because that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. So the price on this uh, studio MS300, and I think it's 400 watt seconds. I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, very powerful splash for use in the studio. It does have AC, it is not battery powered. It has an AC, it has a little AC cable. You can see the plug in the back. Um, the thing that's missing the price, the reason the price is uh, 109 is it's not TTL. It's not through the lens. So for those of you that have a camera, uh, a modern camera, you'll have a pop-up flash on it. And that flash is automatically set to TTL. The calculation for how much flash you need is, is done inside the camera's firmware through the lens. That's what TTL stands for, T through the lens. Uh, and it makes that calculation. When you buy a speed light, you'll have a switch that goes from manual to TTL. So even when you put the speed light on top, it fires at the subject, whatever the subject is, it makes the calculation as to how much light it needs when it comes back into the camera through the lens, TTL. The, most studio flashes are like that so that you can control them uh, with flash uh, transmitters and receivers. This one does not have that TTL feature. So again, because you're using a manual lens, and a flash that does not have TTL, you have to think a little bit more about your calculations. Now, one of the things, and I can't show it to you right now because it's, we're, being used, we're using it as a monitor. One of the benefits of the uh, Panasonic camera is that Panasonic produces an app. Um, and in the, both the Apple Store and the Google Play Store, that enables you to tether to a smart device, whether it's a phone or an iPad, from your camera. So you don't need a wire. It, it does it via 802 wireless, right? It connects to the iPad automatically. So what you end up doing is now, once you've set up the camera in the direction of the shot, and you're happy with the framing and the uh, focus, you just go up to your iPad, take a shot, bring it up, take a look at it, see if you're happy with it, change your light, your, uh, you know, your focus, whatever you need to make changes to, and then go back to the iPod and take another shot. And so I end up now, it's amazing, we would never have done this, even in the digital age, I'll make 60, 100, sometimes as many as 200 shots of a single set um, because I have you know, pretty much infinite SD card space and I'm tethered so I can see these minor changes because I'm looking not at an LED screen, but an iPad screen that big 
And I can see these minor changes that I may want to make either in the set or lighting or moving the light itself. You know, there's a lot of things that you may want to do. And it's convenient because you don't have to spend very much time with the camera. You just stand over at the, in my garage, it's, I have a, a surface, a horizontal, waist high horizontal surface that I can just put it on and uh, you can make the shot. I didn't, I didn't get pictures of the garage. I should have. So you guys can see it. You see it in the video with all my garage stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Um, so the point that I was starting to make here is another thing that you don't want to do back in the olden days is if you had studio flash, you had to wire your camera, your wire had a, uh, analog output, a 3.5 millimeter plug from the camera to the flash. Let's go right there. That's exactly what you want to do. Thank you. So in this case, uh, since it's a Godox flash, you can get yourself the Godox X-Pro uh, wireless transmitter. It will control in, in channel and, uh, let's see, what do they call it? They call it channel and, let me see, Zen channel and the GR stands for something. I want to say great. But you can control up to 64 different flashes. Because the flash that I selected, the MS300, is Godox, it automatically has a receiver built into it. So the X-Pro talks to that flash. So once I set up the flash and I'm happy with the position, I can control the flash from the X-Pro without, without necessarily walking to it. And uh, let me give you a good example. At, uh, and I brought this up before. My son Jason and I last November shot the, uh, the uh, Marine Corps Happy Birthday Ball. And we were shooting, uh, I was responsible for the portraits. So I had two, uh, two speed lights, Godox speed lights, uh, set apart, aimed at the, the area where they set up uh, the uh, background. And I was using uh, this X-Pro to control both lights. Now, once I did it, because the X-Pro and the uh, V860s are through the lens, I literally set it up at the beginning of the night and then took 300 shots without making any changes uh, because it does TTL. Now the X-Pro will support uh, either speed lights or studio flashes that have TTL, which makes your life much easier, especially if you're using multiple flashes. But since the MS300 is not TTL, you have to go to manual mode and make changes yourself. Now that sounds like a lot of manual things, but it should have been stuff, it should be stuff that you know how to do anyway, because one day, you're going to be in a situation where whether you're a fully automatic camera or not, you you have a fully automatic camera with a fully automatic lens with a fully automatic flash, you're going to have to make a man a shot to get the shot that you want. So it's good to know these things in advance. But the advantage to this X-Pro, this Godox X-Pro flash transmitter is that it handles all of that for you. And you don't have to go around to each uh, one of your flashes to make changes. So again, because I'm on a Panasonic Lumix camera, has a hot shoe, it shares that hot shoe with the Olympus brand, but uh, it, the, they do make options for uh, Canon, Nikon, Sony, and Fuji, uh, if you need them. So just make sure, and you can tell by the letter that follows X-Pro, you'll see this one is X-Pro-O, which is Olympus, and I know that Panasonic shares the Olympus features, both when it comes to the option oh, okay yeah oh that's a g100 or no that's a g85 sorry we don't use, we don't have g85 talk. um uh, so uh it's only it's only 68 dollars and it's going to save you time and anguish in the first shoot that you use it with it's real easy to use it does come with a little book to read but there are so many t uh, videos on youtube covering this technology watch a couple of videos and you'll be an expert using the same is true for that MS 300, that Godox MS 300 flash, same thing, just go to YouTube. And I think there had to be 200 videos on that particular flash. Unit. Okay. So, and we like this one a lot. So let's see, we talk batteries. Let's go to, uh, let's go to the C stand first. So the combination of this flash unit and, um, and uh, the 
soft, the Godox softbox that uh, I got for it was a little bit heavier than I was comfortable putting on my newer uh, stainless steel light stands. So I decided, I broke down, and you've heard me talk about C-stands and how much I hate them and how difficult they are. But since I was doing this work in my garage, it was a lot easier because I can just fold it up in my garage if I have to. Uh, so I went with the E-Mart C-stand uh, one pack. It's 115 bucks. I think I got a little bit of a discount on it. Yeah, there's a 10% discount if you're a prime user. One of the benefits of uh, the C-stands, oh, and a coupon, wow. Uh, one of the benefits of these C-stands is they can handle more weight. This particular C-stand came with two C-clamps. Now, the reason I mention that is a lot of times it's the C-stand only, meaning the, uh, they come uh, uh, just with the stand and the feet, the, the legs, but they don't come with a boom arm. You have to buy that separately, and that starts getting expensive. So you, you can end up spending 250 bucks on a complete C-stand. This one not only came with a boom arm, it also came with two C-stand clamps. And the one benefit to the C-stand clamps is that they are so well engineered that you don't have to put a counterweight on whatever you're holding in the, in the boom arm. I do it anyway, just because I like that they're balanced. But with the C-stand clamp, you don't have to do that. Now, there are some rules to using a C-stand. Um, and one of the rules is uh, whenever you use it, you have to be able to tighten it with your right hand. If you're having to use your left hand to tighten it, it's on the wrong side. And I'll probably do a little sh show on that. I don't need to show, but a little explanation of uh, that. But for the price of $115, you get the C-stand, you get the C-stand legs, you get uh, it's heavy, and it will go up to, I think, 10 feet. Yeah, 9.8 feet. Uh, and it comes with a boom arm and two clamps. And the reason that's helpful is because you can use one clamp in the center to hold the boom arm, and then you can put another one at the end of the boom arm to hold something else. So like the light, for example, that gives you a lot more flexibility. So um, it is heavy. I'm fortunate enough to have enough room in my garage, not only for my car, but to be able to put this out of the way uh, when I can. So when I realized I was going to be able to do that, that I was going with the C-stand, I went to the next one, which is I bought some E-Mart wheels with them. So as I said, the C-stand is uh, E-Mart, but uh, for another 60 bucks. So now I'm 115 plus 60 bucks, 175 bucks into a um, C-stand, a boom arm, two clamps, and locking wheels. And they fit right onto the C-stand. They're designed for it. Uh, so I strongly recommend if you if you plan to use this in studio studio setting, and you don't plan to take it down uh, each time, and you have a place to put it, then just buy the wheels and you can just roll it around. It makes everything very convenient. So the bottom of that, you'll you see them in the uh, again you'll see them in the um, uh, video that we showed at the beginning of the show. All right. C-stand, and it does carry a lot of weight. Uh, I do like having, I, and I do with this one, have a sandbag with it, and I put a sandbag uh, on the side opposite the flash unit. You, you don't necessarily need it if you've got it balanced, but I, it's a film industry thing. I remember being told, make sure there's, a, yeah. there's a sandbags on all the uh, legs on a C-stand. So mm -hmm. Shelley will know that because she, she went to the filmmaker school. So. Okay, so let's go to the sellings. All right, good news. So for a couple of months now, I've been recommending, I'm gonna move back there, give me a full screen for just a sec, Shaw. So these are the sellings, 32 inch photo and video reflectors. There you go, there you go. They're called five in one. And when I bought these, literally, I went to one of the Facebook groups that I belong to, and I told them that these were on sale. I, I'll, when we get back to it, they were on sale for $19.99, and you get a coupon for five or something, you know, all kinds of good things happening. Mm -hmm. So they were on sale, and the people uh, that had seen some of my work said to themselves, oh, I want those because Toby has them. And they went, and they were out of stock literally the same day. 
and they have not been back in stock until yesterday, which is the last time I checked for them in preparation of this show. So this is the 32 inch model. Uh, they do have other models, but when you do the kind of work that I do, these small set photographies, it's a perfect size. Oh, you want to get in? No, I just like you can see the <laughs> amazing amount of light that yeah. reflects. So it actually changes <laughs> our camera, right? Our camera is adjusting for the amount of light. The gold one is my favorite because it produces a warm one that I would notice and other photographers might notice, but most photographers don't notice. It's just a nice highlight. So the reason they call it a five in one, I'm sorry, I should have, I did that too early. The reason they call it a five in one is because it has this zippered envelope, for lack of a better way to describe it. So let me open it up. So the five includes the frame, which is a flexible frame that does the taco fold. This is a translucent white. So this becomes very convenient when you have a flash and you may not have a softbox. You can just shoot it through this translucent surface and it softens everything up. And then, so that's one of them. Then the four include the inside of the envelope, which are which is black in case you don't want any uh, reflection and silver, which is you, you want to kind of match your light. That's the best match for your light basically is if you're using flash. So that's two and three. And then on the outside, we have white, uh, which is non, of course, non, uh, it's opaque. And then we have gold, which has always been my favorite. Uh, I use it a lot when I was doing interviews so I could do carry uh, one light and the reflector and it was plenty uh, with that. Now, the good news is the square version, the 32 inch by 32 inch square version is back in stock. I don't know how long it'll be back in stock, it's only $19. The handles are convenient. Um, let's see, you get, I get cash back because I have a prime reward. It folds down to that Selens case that you see. It comes with that uh, nylon case and you do uh, the taco fold. And I have some people just take this. You fold it like a taco and it's in, and, it's in. and there it is. I don't have the case with me, so I have to let it pop out. So it folds down to a very compact size. And it pops up like a, like a reflector. So there you see an example of how the translucent version is being used. Now, Selens makes a lot of different sizes. We scroll down their pages, they start showing you the different shapes and sizes. So you can get them as round, oval shaped, you can get the triangular shape, um, the rectangles. Uh, so it's very cool that the square one is back and uh, and you have it available to uh, use. So uh, I'm very happy. Got it? All right. Okay, so uh, Selen's 32 by 32 uh, 5 in 1 reflector, uh, very useful, packs compactly, packs it in a compact size, uh, and very useful. Now, eventually you're going to want to mount them on a light stand. So if you do decide to get a set of reflectors, order these clips. They fit on the top of your light stand. This particular model is made by newer. There are other uh, brands if you want, but they sell for about the same price. Um, and that way you can uh, mount that on the top of your light stand and then clip your reflector on it if there's nobody there to hold the reflector for you. That, that's the good news. The bad news is it's not bad news. It only holds it at that one angle because it's clipped to the top of a light stand. So, <laughs> you can do it down here, can't you? No touch. Okay, I won't touch. You weren't supposed to touch. To begin with. All right, I'll wait until you're back with me. But, okay. So, uh, so I always recommend that when you do order a reflector, uh, order these. Uh, they call them portable studio photography background and reflector disc holder. I call it a refle 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 reflector clip. Okay. So just scroll down to that right there. So you can see uh, limo studio right there, about one, two, three, four, five across. Um, the next one right there. So Limo Studio produces a boom arm that has two clips on it. So if you need it, if you don't have someone helping you in your studio uh, 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 
and you, you need someone to hold the reflector at an angle, Limo uh, makes this boom arm that has two reflective clips on it. So you clip your reflector uh, to it, and uh, that way you can use it in case at an angle in case somebody isn't around with you. The shooting that I do, small set uh, photography, um, doesn't require an angle. It, it uh, works perfectly just across it. I use that Rembrandt cross light style where I have the, you know, the, which calls it, softbox on one side and the reflector directly across from the, the uh, film. All right. And those reflectors go, you've seen these before, and I talked about them in the uh, video. These are the newer, uh, <coughs> these are the newer light stands. Uh, and uh, they're good. They will hold up to, I don't know, 45, 50 pounds. And I do have cross or boom arms for these light stands. But what I like about them, there's two things I like about them. One, that they're stainless steel. Two, three things. They'll raise up to about 12 feet, just under 12 feet. Uh, and three, if you go back to the one where it shows a close up right there, it has uh, its mount, the metal mount, will uh, fit either vertically, which is kind of the tradition, you always have it vertically, but this one will unscrew and you can mount it horizontally. So that's helpful when you have uh, lights that doesn't, they don't have enough movement for the vertical mount. You just need them because you want to twist them in horizontal mount. And I've done that with my flashes, for example. Uh, it makes it very convenient to do that. So uh, you get a pair for 119 bucks. And they fold up very nicely. You can put them on a shelf or in the closet someplace. I don't like. But we let, I like them a lot. Okay. Shelly's seen them using pretty much for everything. OK, so. I told you a little bit in the video, and I'm going to go, go back to the photos for just a second. Right there. So uh, select the one with the roses in it, just so I can explain. So these are surfaces produced by a company, the wall and the floor. Uh, they're two feet by two feet, and they're produced by a company called Replica Surfaces. And they're in Texas someplace. And they also have a product called the Replica Surfaces Studio, which is that table that I use that rolls around to mount the surfaces on. It holds both the floor and the wall and has clips that you slide the wall into. So they have their own website, which is where I've always ordered from, replicasurfaces.com. But uh, they announced this week that they have established a relationship with Amazon to become the their Amazon's premier replica or uh, surfaces photo surfaces provider, and they're launching it tomorrow on Friday on Amazon with a line of four new surfaces. Now, if you belong to their Facebook page, you know they've already shared those surfaces with uh, other folks, and there's already photographs with them. It includes, I don't remember the names, it's kind of uh, aged copper. There's, um, I won't remember them all. There's a couple of colored ones, purple and deep purple and blue, I think. Anyway, so th those are going to be released at 10 o'clock tomorrow, central time, on their Amazon store before they release them on their Replica Surfaces website. So. Uh, the only ones that I found, let's go to the replica surfaces. Uh, yeah. So these are the only ones that you could buy at this point. Now, you're going to say to yourself, those are really expensive. They are, they're worth it because uh, when you start using them, you, you start coming up with new ideas and how to use them both as what I'll call floors and walls. Um, I love them. They have a great Facebook group uh, called Replica Surfaces VIP. Um, it's up to 12,800 people or so uh, consistently growing. And that's where they make a lot of their announcements about coming on. That lush view uh, wall that you saw there, that was actually released two Fridays ago, I think. Um, and it was a limited release. That means you can't buy it right now because it's sold out on that day. And they announced all of that in their uh, Facebook group 
that it, one day at a time. It's always released on Fridays at 10 o'clock Central Time. Um, so that's 9 o'clock for me here at Mountain Time. And uh, But you get to go buy them. Uh, you get discounts for buying more than one. You get discounts. You get freebies. They'll give you free stands and a, a free uh, uh, set piece, you know. Uh, so they're very easy to use, especially when you use them with uh, uh, studio, but I was very happy to hear that they had established a relationship with Amazon. Um, uh, the, the disadvantage is that you won't get the coupon benefits on Amazon that you would by buying uh, from your website because they send you coupons, you know, on a weekly basis, 10 and 15% discounts. So, uh, but uh, I imagine as this relationship between replica surfaces and Amazon evolves, Eventually, you'll be able to buy all their products directly from Amazon, including not only the surfaces, but the replica studio, the canvas bag for carrying the surfaces, all of those things that you buy on your website that will eventually be on Amazon. And that was what I wanted to share with you uh, today. I like them a lot. I think I am at about 20 of their surfaces uh, right now. That sounds like a lot, but uh, they're very useful when you're doing this kind of photography especially as you expand, I'm going through, I'm going to start on another phase uh, that's going to give me a more painterly look for some of the work that I'm doing. Um, and I'm very excited about that uh, because I think the surfaces are going to fit right into kind of that new look uh, that I want out of my photography. So, all right. I think that is everything for today. I can't think of anything else. I don't have any uh, questions or comments over here. I didn't see anything in the uh, Amazon room. We're glad that you took the time to join us today. We really appreciate you being here. We hope you found this informative. If you do have questions, so uh, what I've discovered um, as I've hung out in the Replica Surfaces Facebook page is that of the 12,000, 13,000 people that are in there, 12,000 400, 500 of them are women. And uh, Replica Surfaces promotes the idea that you can use your iPhone with their surfaces to get credible shots. There's a lot of product photography and uh, cooking photography in it uh, as people share recipes and their products, candles and soaps and jewelry, things like that. But what I've discovered is that uh, they're ready to move to from away from their iPhone, and don't get me wrong, iPhone, I'm, I'm sorry, smartphones are designed now to take great pictures, but they do have their limitations, especially when it comes to this kind of photography that's basically still live photography. Um, so there's a lot of questions, and I get to answer them. I get, I, I look like a good guy because I'm always answering questions based on my experience. I don't, I, I do a good job of not referring to our Amazon store and things like that because that's not what they're doing. But I've noticed there's a lot of activity in this group with people moving away from smartphones and uh, into more sophisticated, sophisticated cameras because they want to get better shots and they're willing to make the investment. So, so I guess what I'm, if if you're one of those people that would like to move from your smartphone to uh, a quality digital camera, write us. Either make comments uh, on any of these. Uh, videos in Amazon. We've uh, provided you uh, down at the bottom of the screen. You'll see our contact information. So let us know if you have any questions about any of the things that you talk about. And I'm not and I'm not limited to talking about um, the um, uh, Lumix cameras and the Godox lights and the Godox boxes and things like that. Um, yeah, I can pretty much because I've been as, as Shelley mentioned, I've been doing this for almost 50 years. So uh, I know a lot about a lot of different things when it comes to photography. So please feel free to ask the question. We'll be happy to answer that for you. Okay. Last words? That's all we have for today. We're glad that you joined us. We'll be back again next week with more about small set photography. And again, if you see any pictures out there in the wild and you say, I'm good, I really wish that I could take a picture like that, send the picture to us at support at videotarot.com. And let us know. You would like to know more about how to take a photograph like that, and we will show you the necessary equipment and setup that you would need to take that photograph, including any settings that you might need to put into the camera 
so just send us that information and we're happy to answer those questions and uh, help you figure out how to get that shot. And if you follow uh, uh, my Instagram feed, you'll note that a lot of those shots that I take uh, were stylized by Shelly. Uh, I use her kind of uh, uh, knowledge of things like feng shui and stuff like feng shui. Good enough. Good enough. Um, to help me stylize my shots. And it's nice to have that feminine touch in some of them because a lot of still life photography is not necessarily masculine in nature, although you can make it that way. But it's nice to have her helping me with the stylizing the shots. I'll handle composition, I'll handle the, the equipment side. Uh, but she's very good at styling them because I get a sense of a, a feminine touch. So I really appreciate her work. Yeah. So it's as usual for us, it's a team effort. All right. All right. That's all we have for today. Thanks for joining us today, guys. We look forward to seeing you next Thursday at 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on all the same channels. And we'll try. I know I said 1 p.m. That's what I said last or the last time I saw you. We'll make sure that we have everything in place to, so it's not all horrible and good. Okay. Thank you for joining Video Tarot Live, hosted by Toby Yunus and Shelly Carney. Please subscribe and leave a comment or question, and we'll consider your ideas for future shows. Share this live stream with your family and friends so they can learn about current digital photography practices. Check the show description box for links and resources and please come back again next week.